Hi guys. It is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day. We're in the end times in the paradise of Brooksville, Florida here on this gorgeous Sunday morning, January 7th. We're wrapping up our first week of 2018. Uh, it's Sunday. Oh shit, I'm supposed to have a doomsday sermon prepared for you. Yes, little dog. Psst. Hush. Uh, perhaps I will, uh, perhaps I will, you know, I might have to dig around with a little bit of Ted Kaczynski today for our sermon, but while I'm thinking about today's doomsday sermon and I'm sitting here enjoying my planet saving cup of organic coffee on this beautiful morning in the end times uh, I think I want to go back I want to turn the clock back okay Did you hush somebody keeps wanting to talk about some no shit uh, I'm going to turn the clock back to, I believe, March of 1993. Was it 93 or 94? I'm pretty sure it's March of 1993. It's not that important. This is just one of those crazy hambone stories. Uh, you can decide <coughs> what this has to do with a collapse of a planet, and it does have a lot to do with a collapse of a planet. Most of these stories that I just tell about myself, that your old doomsday narcissist up here talking about himself, they do have morals and points. Well, they might not have morals if they're about me, but they, hopefully they have a point. And so this story was brought to my memory by this little ongoing dialogue between two of uh, my tribe's members, Sister Inc. And Brother Greg, I will, Sancho Panza and I will be meeting Sister Inc. tomorrow. Uh, so, Sister Inc., she's 27 years old, and she is not a clueless moron. Not a clueless moron at age 27, and she is getting ready to. Uh, I hope to put her on camera here. If she'll agree to it but basically the story is she is getting ready to go woofing in in Hawaii uh, she's never been to Hawaii but she's heading to Hawaii in the end times uh, to start her new life as a woofer and see where her adventure takes her and good for you Sister Inc. walking away uh, from Empire in your dead-end job to start your new adventure in Hawaii. And she has chosen Hawaii, well, for various reasons, but she thinks that Hawaii, the island of Hawaii, might be a good place to be when, you know, when the, the ship really comes down when it all comes down and brother Greg who's not the most diplomatic of our tribes members brother Greg uh, takes issue with her uh, her decision thinking it might not be that Hawaii might not be the best place or or I assume any island might not be the best place where you want to be when it all comes down and this memory came to be about my own trip to Hawaii. Um, and a lot of what I'm getting ready to say could be said for St. Croix in the Virgin Islands as well. So as I say, I went there in 93 where I had been, uh, spent the winter in Costa Rica as I had done. I spent five winters in Costa Rica. And I mentioned to people down in Costa Rica who knew me that I was uh, thinking about going to Hawaii. I was planning to go there for six months to a year to meet my girlfriend and her kid out there in Maui. 
and spend six months to a year. And I mentioned this, and it was weird because several people in Costa Rica said ham bone don't do it. That you will, you are just not the right fit for Hawaii. Uh, it's, it's not going to be a good place for you. But of course, I do not listen to advice. I need to prove to myself what a clueless fucking moron I am to really believe it. So against many folks' advice, I decided to head off to Hawaii. Not only me, but I actually shipped my gas-sucking truck for $800 I paid to ship my gas-sucking truck over there because I suffered from this absolutely ridiculous delusion. If any of you are suffering from this delusion, uh, let, me, uh, let, let me explode this little myth right now that used cars in Hawaii are actually a hell of a lot cheaper than they are in California. I had some crazy idea that I was going to ship my truck for $800 over there and not only would that prevent me from having to buy one of these overpriced cars on the island, but then I was going to drive it for six months to a year and I could sell it for a huge handsome profit. Uh, so that was the plan. So I, I, I put my gas sucking truck on a, um, le left it at the shipper in Seattle. Then I flew off from, I think, San Francisco or wherever. And this is what happened. The plane is coming into the airport. We're actually circling the airport and Hawaii comes into view. And suddenly I get this absolute epiphany, this, this weird, I mean, cold water splash in your face epiphany that I had just seriously fucked up. Seriously fucked up. I mean, but when the, when the tires hit the runway, I got this absolute just sense of dread that I had made a huge fucking mistake. And so we taxi into the runway. Before I even go to baggage claim, I make a fucking beeline to the phone. This was right before cell phones. Or I already would have been on the phone. But I get off that plane. I race to the telephone to call the, um, the people shipping my truck to cancel the shipment. Did not put my uh, truck on that boat. And then I was just going to get a flight. I wasn't even going to leave the airport. Well, I might have gone and said hi to my girlfriend and spent a night. Uh, but I was going to turn my ass around and get my howly ass back to the safe side. So I call and the nice lady goes, well, sir, if we'd heard from you two hours ago, we could have done that, but your truck has been loaded. And they actually load them into crates. Uh, she says, there's no turning it around now. Your truck will be there in eight days. You can pick up You can pick up your truck, and uh, God damn it, God damn it! And there began five weeks, five weeks of of that. It can only be described as just an unremitting hell. Uh, it was it was perhaps the single worst five weeks of my entire life from the moment my tires touched down at that airport till the moment that bird flew me back and got my ass back to California. Now, it, when this, I, I happened to arrive 
when the the state of Hawaii was basically on strike. <clears throat> Just all the state workers, including a lot of the cops, a lot of the government had pretty much shut down. I don't know what their grievances were on, uh, I don't know if it was pay or conditions or whatever. Anyway, pretty much the entire government of Hawaii, it was running on absolute bare bones. One of those things that meant is that there weren't any cops. Uh... There were no, like, state park rangers at the beaches. There was no law enforcement. And a lot of people, and I would normally uh, think this was a very good thing. I thought when I heard, and I heard this, and people were, basically the beaches were just wide open. That there was no law enforcement on the beaches. Uh, it, was just, it was just the old west. There was no one there to collect fees. Uh, you could just go down there and camp for free on the beaches, and all the hippies uh, were acting like, you know, they're in Maui, that this was the coolest fucking thing. So I first got the crazy idea that uh, th this might be a good thing. And so anyway, I hook up with my girlfriend in Maui, and... Uh, She'd been there for like six months, absolutely loved it over there. She was managing the banana bungalows and, and uh, what do you call that town? I can't remember, Haiku or something, Wailuku, Haiku, all those names sound the same to me. So, uh, spent a few days over there in Maui. What was the first instance? It's when... And she has a kid. She has a, uh, a biracial kid who happens to look Hawaiian. You would think the kid, you know, being cream in the coffee, uh, or coffee in the cream in, in this case, uh, you know, it looks like she, she looked like she could be a native Hawaiian. She loved it. The little girl, of course, for the first time in her life, uh, you know, she wasn't a misfit. Um, so we were, we decided to go camping on the beach in uh, Maui somewhere. So uh, we get there and everything's fine during the afternoon. Uh, we, we go about our business and do what, you, do what people do on beaches and then we started pitching our tent, and there were several other other tents uh, there on the beach, and so we start pitching our tent, and this native Hawaiian, it, it was us, there weren't any other Howleys, what they call white people is Howleys, H-A-O-L-I-E-S, Howleys. We were the only Howleys on the beach, and there were probably like six other tents of, of native Hawaiians. And uh, this fellow comes over when we're pitching our tent, and he asks what we think we're doing. And uh, I said, well, I, I said, we, you know, we're getting ready to go camping here. And he goes, no, you're not. And I'm like, like, excuse me, what do you mean? I said, is it illegal to camp here? You know, he had his own tent there. And, and, and he goes, and he goes, there's no Howleys allowed on this beach. And uh, if you know what native Hawaiians look like, they, they tend to average, the men tend to average about 350 pounds. And... When a 350-pound native Hawaiian is uh, telling you it's time to pack up your shit, and all these others, about a dozen other ones, were, were watching and kind of laughing, we thought it might be a good idea to take his advice and get our howly asses back to the safe side. You know, cause, I mean, there were no cops, of course. Uh, so that was my first little, my first little introduction 
and so that gave me a bad taste in my mouth so I thought it was something peculiar to Maui so uh, I headed over to Kauai uh, to the what do they call that the Garden Isle so I split from Maui took the plane or the ferry or however I'm still hadn't gotten my I was still waiting for my truck uh, to get there so I go over to Kauai uh, to try to set up something over there and I just I went into an absolute just rock bottom depression an absolute rock bottom depression living in the hostel I moved over into the hostel in Kauai uh, and my back uh, this this has never happened this psychosomatic thing I I had this absolutely I mean the worst backache I have ever had in my entire life even worse than when I broke my back that this just this wrenching pain <coughs> in my back and uh, the my brain was uh, more in pain than my back so I go over there to Kauai <coughs> And somewhere in that time, my truck arrives. I don't even remember how I got my truck over to Kauai. Anyway, somehow I remember. I don't even remember how that happened. I was kind of in a fugue state uh, for about a week. And so I went, you know, I was going to be there six months to a year. So I remember at one point, this is when they still had sugar cane farms in Hawaii, which they no longer do. I'm thrilled to report so I remember at one point so I said okay Hambo well you need a job for six months to a year so I actually went to a sugarcane farm to uh, apply for work and uh, you, you can imagine the reception I got when I when I walked into this place uh, I mean it was all native Hawaiians you know these big fucking dudes and just like I, I remember walking in and just absolute silence absolute silence and I started asking them you know saying that I was looking for a job or whatever and just silence no hey guys is there any work around here I, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Is, is there anybody that I can talk to uh, about finding a job here? So I got that point pretty quick that I probably was not going to be employed at a sugarcane farm. Uh, so I remember spending long periods of time curled up in a fetal position on the floor of the closet in my little room in, uh, in the hostel, spending quite a bit of time uh, in the hostel. See, my, my girlfriend had put in her two-week notice, so I, I had to spend... Uh, I guess two weeks over there in Kauai waiting for her to finish up her employment. So then I have some vague memory of, let's say we're on Kauai and she gets over there with, so she and the kid get over there and we're, uh, e even the price of the hostel was, was completely uh, out of bounds I had absolutely no employment I had money this was I was you know for from 1988 to 2008 I was a real estate agent so I would go back and forth from being a real estate agent to uh, living like a wild naked savage on the beach so I did have some real estate savings thank God uh, but it would have been eaten up real quick because I wasn't planning to sell real estate that year because I was planning to be uh, whacking sugar cane in Hawaii that year. Oh, shit, 
Oh, hey now. Uh, and so, uh, what happened in Kauai? So we were camping at uh, Puff the Magic Dragon's Cave in Hanali. I did have one wild adventure in Puff the Magic Dragon's Cave. <clears throat> That's a whole nother story, which is a crazy fucking story, what went down in Puff the Magic Dragon's Cave, but it's really not relevant to uh, this story. And then uh, we actually, we actually made it two or three nights in Hanali because there were enough howlies around, I guess, to protect us. But of course, we, uh, it was suggested to us after two or three days, these, these uh, aloha spirited native Hawaiians suggested that maybe it was time for the Howleys to pack up our stuff and find a new place to live, which is what we did. So then we go over, what's the island where that actually has Honolulu? Is that Oahu? Which island has, uh, has I think it's Oahu anyway. This is all 24 years ago. Uh, forgive my my memory and geography here. So we go over to Oahu, and I said, "Well, somewhere on this fucking island, uh, something's going to work out." So I'd been there, I'd been there now for about three weeks, I guess. I'd been there just sinking down into uh, my black depression. So we get over to Oahu. And I can't remember the exact details, but in, in order to, to keep my girlfriend from getting gang raped on the beach uh, and, and her three-year-old daughter from getting kidnapped, uh, we decided she ended up staying at the battered women's shelter where uh, no men were allowed, obviously, because the rates of domestic violence in Hawaii are just absolutely astronomical with the alcoholism and the anger and, the, and just the, the whole fucking mess. Uh, so she... Uh, I had to drop her off, literally at 6 p.m. in the battered women's shelter while we were trying to find a place to rent. I, I, at this point, I still was thinking I was going to find paradise in, in Hawaii. Said so We just hadn't found the right island. So, uh, so anyway, I would drop her off at the, uh, the battered women's shelter, and then I would go off. She had to be in by 6 o'clock. She and the kid had to be in. So at 6 o'clock, I was cut loose, and I was doing, I was pretty heavily drinking myself. So uh, I actually made it a couple of nights without getting killed on the beach uh, while and then during the day we would uh, we would try to find a rental over there uh, but of course you know they need the first and the last and they want to see you know your employment and all of that shit we were two we were both unemployed blah 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 <coughs> so I think it might have been the third night so it was I went out uh, I dropped her off at 6 o'clock at the battered women's shelter, and I went off on a drunk and, and got totally fucking ripped uh, at this Howley bar. And then went, to, uh, went back to the beach where I actually had my, my tent set up on the beach. Th these guys weren't thieves, that's one thing. Uh, I never had anything stolen. It wasn't like Costa Rica where you could never leave a tent on the beach and walk away for five minutes. They weren't thieves. 
so anyway, I, I remember I, I got there, and I was, I guess when I came, so it was later at night, so when I, uh, I guess when I pulled in, my headlights went into some uh, tent, this couple, this native Hawaiian couple, uh, were, were in their tent asleep, and my headlights woke them up. And so uh, here I am staggering out of my uh, staggering out of my truck uh, to get into my tent, you know, my drunken my drunken stagger. Where here comes this absolutely enraged uh, three hundred pounder out of his tent that the little drunken howly prick. Of course, he was drunker than I was, and uh, he comes out of that tent and sees me and uh, it is it, it's amazing i'm alive to tell this tale uh he was ready to rip my fucking little howly head off and uh i, w I was about this far uh from getting the living shit beat out of me and his girlfriend uh, came out of the tent and broke it up and uh, told him to get his drunken ass uh, back to the tent to fucking take a chill pill and she looked at me and just kind of shook her head uh, and suggested it might be a good idea for me to pack up and leave the next morning. And I thought that was the best piece of advice I had heard since I got to Hawaii. So I got up the next morning, packed up my campsite, and uh, went and picked my girlfriend up at, uh, at the battered women's shelter. And we went to downtown Honolulu. So we were on whatever island Honolulu was. Going to downtown Honolulu, I remember we were in this high-rise hotel right across the street from the zoo, like so we could hear the lions roaring every morning outside our hotel room. But I was up on like the seventh floor, and so that is where we stayed. And I actually almost enjoyed downtown Honolulu it was the it was the first time that I had felt safe and the and, and what's going on in the background and all of this the whole time uh, I was over there uh, no it, well it would have been about that point about three weeks into it so we move into the hotel and then uh, I decide it, it's time it, it's fucking time to get our asses back to the U.S. And so I go to sell my truck. That's right. That's what I w was busy doing, was trying to sell my fucking truck. And I got the next rude awakening that I could get a lot more for, and this was a Toyota truck. Uh, you can get a hell of a lot more for a Toyota truck in uh, in San Francisco than you can in Honolulu. Uh, I, I had absolutely no bites. I mean, I was getting offers on this truck uh, on a nice, uh, you know, probably five or six thousand dollar truck. I, I mean, I was getting offers of about uh, of about three thousand dollars. So what do I do? Is I spend another. 800 fucking dollars so uh, is 1600 dollars i spent just on getting my gas sucking truck there and back so i had to spend another fucking 800 dollars to send my gas sucking truck back and then that took eight days for the truck to get there so we hung out for a week in uh in the hotel getting fucking ripped on my ties every night and uh there you go. So, the day before my truck was scheduled to arrive in uh, Seattle, 
we flew back to Seattle and I went and got my truck and went on with my fucking life, vowing never, ever to return to Hawaii again. I, I literally, guys, <coughs> you got to remember, I have been in Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua all during their civil wars. I have had several instances with machine guns pointed at my head uh, in Latin America. Uh, I have never, never felt anywhere near is, is actually physically threatened. You know, to I've, I've never, now in Latin America you have to live, you know, with the thieves, with the thieving little varmints that they will steal everything, but you don't actually feel like at any minute you could have your ass killed just to live under that that constant pressure particularly when the sun goes down that you could be dead you could literally have the shit beaten out of you uh in, in the next 10 minutes by you know by in this case by some drunken enraged <coughs> 350 pound samoan with a chip on his shoulder and this is why uh, Hawaii is the very if I had to choose the last place on planet earth where I want to be when uh, when this shit comes down it would be the great state of Hawaii I assure you uh, anybody thinking that they're going to escape the collapse, the, the Mad Max future of the collapse of global industrial civilization, especially uh, any little honky thinking they're going to go to Hawaii, and I would say the same for any island in the Caribbean. If you think you're going to get away from this, I mean, these, these islands are... Or, you know, they're fucking islands. Every single thing is flown in or shipped in. Uh, the last place I'm going to be, as I, as I told Sister Inc. yesterday, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow, uh, she is going to be, well, when it all comes down, if she's over there in Hawaii, when it all comes down, uh, she will just be gang raped. Uh, <clears throat> she will probably be impregnated by by one of these guys. She, but but of course she's going to have the Hawaiian women pissed off at her. And if you know anything about what a true native Hawaiian woman looks like, they don't look like the little hula girls. Uh, she's going to have to deal with the enraged. Hawaiian women as the men gang raper and of course I would just be killed the first day the first day and I guess I would rather be killed than gang raped uh, I 100% I, I assure any Howley listening to this <coughs> thinking they're gonna go to Hawaii to escape the Mad Max future uh, Got one thing to tell you. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. But I still encourage Sister uh, Sister Inc. to have her adventure because for, for some crazy reason, I don't think global industrial civilization is going to collapse uh, as much as I wish in the next year or two. So I am heartily encouraging this young lady to get out there and enjoy it while she still can. And here's to you. And, and I do want to add, I, I just want to make clear for anyone misunderstanding, misunderstanding any part of this rant, I 100% agree with the native Hawaiians. If I were a native Hawaiian, 
I would be one of those guys wanting to beat the living fuck out of Howley, okay? I 100% agree that we need to give them their country back. That it was Howley, we went in there, and what did we do? We kidnapped, or did we kill? I, get, I think we just kidnapped their queen. Uh, when was that? When, when did we go over there? It wasn't that long ago, I think. It, was it 1913? Could it have been that recent? Was it 1813 or 1913? I think it was ni around 1913 that we just went over there uh, and, and kidnapped their queen planted all that goddamn sugar cane and pineapple, but of course it was, I mean, Hawaii, we needed it for the military uh, base. It was all, I'm sure it was all about Pearl Harbor, had uh, more than sugar cane and pineapples, but you better believe sugar cane and pineapples and it had something to do with it. Uh, I 100% I support the native Hawaiians in, in their rage and in their campaign to get their country back. You know, this is, this is a no-brainer. Uh, fuck the Howleys. I, but simply because I 100% understand their rage and support their cause, and that does not mean that I'm going to ever take my howly ass back to Hawaii again. I, I would go to fucking sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, I, I would go to Syria, uh, Afghanistan, North Korea. I, 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 would, I would be more likely to go to North Korea at this point uh, than Hawaii. But, uh, Sister Inc., May you have a fine adventure. And Brother Greg, I think you're doing just fine. Uh, I think Brother Greg is up there in the coastal mountains of Oregon. And uh, I assure you, uh, if, if my choice, if my, if, if my two choices were Brother Greg's 22-acre compound and on the coastal hills of Oregon or uh, or Hawaii when this uh, when this all shit comes down I uh, my vote is with brother Greg but I've got to figure out where I'm gonna land and I haven't ruled out the Pacific Northwest entirely probably won't end up there but we will see but Right now, what I'm doing is finding my little, uh, my, my little snowbird home in the great state of Florida. So I want to get back out there on my search for my little piece of uh, paradise, stand for the end times in the Sunshine State on this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times. I may or may not be back at you with a doomsday sermon from brother Ted Kaczynski. We will see about that. Bye, guys.